All right, folks, welcome to some bonus coverage here at PAWrestling.com's Match of the Week, Part 2. We're at Council Rock South High School for the Council Rock, Sorth, Council Rock North, Council Rock South match. Joined always by Glenn. Glenn, like, let's talk. Let's, let's wrap a little bit. Let's talk about some of these keys to this match. Yeah, let's get into the Schuylkill Valley Sports keys to the match. Well, you know, the Indians need to take control of the matchups. When we talk about the Indians, that's Council Rock North. You know, their studs need to win with bonus points. You know, they have that Fab Five. They've had them for a couple of years now. And some of them are seniors. They have one uh, junior in Hauserman. And I'm telling you what, this may be uh, one of the biggest matchups in the SOL probably in the last at least seven years because that's when the last time Council Rock South lost the Suburban One League match. And I'm really looking forward to this match. The Hawks are going to be down a man, as we know, with Cole Flanagan. Uh, they're going to need to minimize bonus points with those big matchups, especially with the, the North studs. And, um, you know, the toss-up bouts, this is, you know, we've been talking about toss-up bouts now for a while. And this is where Council Rock South needs to win their, those toss-up bouts. The coin flip is going to be huge. I think uh, Coach Vaco has a little bit more mobility tonight with Flanagan out. Um and, you know, he, here's the thing. Is it North's year? And we, we talked about this all year long. We've been arguing, is it North or South this year? You know I'm going with North. Uh, and South losing last night kind of tells me a little bit about, uh, you know, South, they, they are vulnerable. Yeah, definitely. South is, is uh, vulnerable. You can look at, you know, think back to when the last time they lose back-to-back -back matches within District 1. Uh, and you probably have to go back a long time. Uh, you know, you hit on the... Uh, control the matchups by the by the uh, Indians. They need to their big guys to step up and score bonus points uh, at a, at a high rate. And uh, you know when we look at uh, Council Rock South, something they didn't do a very good job of yesterday was minimizing bonus points, and giving them up. So they're really going to be on their game a day later and, and do it again. Uh, you know, so again, the, the infamous or ill-fated coin flip is going to be huge, just like it was yesterday a little bit for that Boyer Town and Jay match. And, uh, you know, got out of hand pretty quick there after a quick start for the Bears. So, you know, you got to go back quite a few years for when last time North beat Rock South. But, uh, you know, this is one of those things where it, it's, uh, you know, it, it can happen on the youth night. You know, just wrestled a full JV duel. Uh, the middle schools wrestled, and they had some youth matches, and the, the CRWA is here. You can here. see the little guys yeah, clearing the yeah, match now. Yeah, they're dispersing now. right now as the captains are out there, and you got, you know, that Fab Five out there waiting for Rock North and seeing them coming out for Rock South for the coin toss, see where it's at. You know, it looks like uh, I sent just Waterman out, shake a lot of hands out there. Yeah, there you go. They're sending one guy. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, we're going to start at 138 pounds tonight. You know, you talk about some of those stats. Give me give me those stats that Mike dug up on North so, and South. So, again, Mike, uh, we we looking at this at a glance. Uh, South holds a lead of 18-5 to 5 in this series, dating back to the 2002-2003 season. Council Rock South has won the last eight in the series and 11 of the last 12. Uh, North's last win came on January 25th, 2012, when they beat Rock South 41-27. And just like the streak that Owen Jay was on, or at least the success at home, South has won their last 23 straight matches here in this gym. Their last home loss was in the state duels first round to Wilson Let Westlawn in a 30-26 match. And uh, their last regular season home loss was in 2013 to Pensbury. So as we come here, we're starting 138 pounds. We saw see Larry Sai from the Indians checking too. And for Rock South... Now wrestling at 138 pounds, please count Rock North. Here we go. Tommy Wallishin. And Tommy Wallishin. Well, Walshin spins right behind on Cy there. Nice takedown. Little uh, counter offense with his defense. It's that whole adage, I shoot, I score, you shoot, I score, Glenn. Yeah, I love that drill, by the way. Chuck Letter is our official tonight. Seeing a lot of the, some of uh, the best we have to offer in uh, District 1's officials in the last two days. So yeah, that's absolutely. always a good thing to see. Wallace shouldn't get out and try and get some pressure for oh, it. But side right yeah. out. Right up and out. Contrast nice in body styles here. Side more compact and power. Powerful and, and Walsh a little bit long and lanky. See if he's going to use that reach to his advantage. There is a double leg takedown. 
does a good job of putting those hips on the mat and scoring another takedown. So he's up 4-1 here early with a minute and 10 left in the period, and he cuts them. Maybe we might see uh, if he's feeling confident here or see some catch and release going. Yeah, it looks like it now. Yeah, I'm enjoying the grilled cheese, the famous grilled cheese here at Council Rock South. Just letting everybody know. Another takedown by Willisham. So Tommy out to a, a nice 6-1 lead here for the Golden Hawks. And this is what they need is a, a nice win right out of the gate. Size up and out again. I think he earned that one. Wilson back in on a single, scores that easily. And now he's opening up, Joe, 8-3. Yeah. Sorry, glad I was uh, doing a little scoring there. No problem. So as we got 13 left here in the first period, and it's been all Wall Wallace and uh, side to his feet again. Wallace doing do a nice job holding him down, knocking him at that point. Again, we talked about it yesterday, scoring those points at the end of a match, or end of a period, rather. And, you know, he, he knows he needs to ride it. Yeah, excellent job there with the timing. Again, this is a well-coached Council Rock South team with great mat awareness and match awareness. So they know what they need to do. And uh, Tom Woolish is getting out and uh, doing the job right now for the Golden Hawks. Another single leg yeah. shot. Easy finish. Yeah, he's put on a real clinic here from his feet. He's hitting a lot of different attacks. We're going to cut him right now. Coaching staff say let him go. And the catch and release is on. Oh, yeah, your favorite. It's like fly fishing. Another pick. Look at that shot there, right there. Nice ankle pick by Wilson. Let's Cy right up. Cy comes in on his own shot. Wilson's got a counter. He gets hooked around that leg, trying to get around back. There's two. Chuck Letter signaling two. And we're at 14-5 here with a minute and 10 to go in this period, second period. Got a stalemate. stalemate there. And Tommy Wilson going neutral again here. Another good shot. Deep coming out the back door here. It's going to find a leg. Yeah, size Always on. cut to one, Joe. Nice job there. See if he tries to turn. No, he's going to go back and catch him. Oh, he's oh, got that near side cradle locked up. Cradle. No, couldn't get it. This will be one of those matches where they that six, they need five or six here, without a doubt, Rock South. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, when's the last time, and I mean to cut you off there, Glenn, when's the last time we came into a match, this match in particular, this is like the third or fourth year in a row now we've been here, where we're talking about, you know, Rock South having to score bonus points to, you know, build that lead. We yeah, haven't. We, we haven't we, because, you know. You know we're, we're in uncharted territory right, here. Right. Council Rock South has always been the, the team with the big guns and the stars, but, you know, the, the – tide is you know shifted a little bit over to council rock north knowing that they have that fab five and you know along with the fab five they've added uh, a, a heavyweight you know yeah, max that, ferrari can't yeah. sleep on him and you know that we know that's key in, in in any league on any team having a decent heavyweight makes you that much better so so he's got to try and hang in here i think if he can you know the tech ball probably isn't the worst case scenario for council rock north but si has got to try and fight uh, and get through this match yep. without the, the tech fall. Goes right in on a shot, trying to get back in the match. And Wilson using some great counter offense here. He's, he's going to watch on. it. He's going to get cross face cradle. Oh, and here it comes. Wilson's got locked up. Yeah, it's an awkward oh, one, though. Sai so, hanging tough and not uh, not giving up the points yet. Trying to turn the corner here. Looking double. Ooh, ripping that ankle. Got 19 Chuck seconds left here left in the second period. Chuck Letter calls out immediately. Good call. Oh, nice shot again by Wollison. He has just been unstoppable, Joe, on these shots. Low singles, doesn't matter. Ankle picks, and there's two. And that's what we were talking about last night in that Boyertown O and J match, man. Scoring points at the end of a period is just huge. And, and keeping them off the board or vice versa. So here we go, 18-7 going on the third period. Coach McCormick's putting them up. Instructing his wrestler immediately to put him up. So they're looking tech fall right yep. now. Clearly. 
Ooh, both guys shoot at the same time. Another great shot there, though. Ellison gets the lower. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe he got lower on Cy. Cy jumps back in. And do we have one there or no? No, no, no change. I don't think Woolish knows that. No. Cy, that <laughs> Kyle Waterman called for a stale yeah. We got a, they got another coach. How many coaches is that now with Waterman over there? I mean, these may be the, the biggest staffs you see, um, you know, in District 1 right here, north and south. I haven't seen a coach from south go to north or north come to south yet. I think it's against for law. That. <laughs> uh, great job coming out the back door. Side didn't even defend it. And that makes it 22 to, to 9. Make that 22-10, 12-point lead here with a minute 23 with a running clock here in the third period. Walsh, and there it is, makes it 25. Yeah, he's just got to cut him right away. He does. Great work there by Walsh. Now he knows what's going on. He understands the sense of urgency with the clock. Still a minute, over a minute to go. So he's in pretty good shape for the tech ball. There's another yeah, one. There it is. So Walsh does his job for Council Rock South. Five nothing lead. Thirteen takedowns. We got Sammy Hayes here. Sammy Hayes coming out. And he's been wrestling great so far yeah. this year. He's looking to go upstairs early. Goes right into a single leg off that. We got Brian Adams. Hayes with the early 2 nothing lead, as you said. Hayes, one of this group that's uh, Fab Five that's going D1 next year. He's going to be heading and continuing his academic and athletic uh, careers at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I, 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 thought, I thought you couldn't say it anymore. Uh, it's yeah. two nights in a row. Yeah, yeah. 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 Another quick takedown makes it 4-1 in favor of Hayes. He's trying to go over body there. He's trying to go big. He wants to you know, get six for his team. No, maybe I'll travel with you down there to Mountaineer country and watch Pittsburgh, West Virginia next year if it's down I, here. I told, I told Antonio Petroselli that first backyard brawl, he's in the lineup. I'm there. Yep, and I said I wanted to go this year if possible. So looking forward to that if I can get down there this season. Chase trying to bird ahead. Can't do it. Go to that front headlock from the Adam's standing Adam's doing a good position. job fighting it off. Yeah, he is. Got to drag out of there. Out of bounds helps him. Sammy Hayes uh, is so fundamentally sound, but he can go upstairs with the big toss, too, when he needs to. Nice head inside single here. He's putting a hip on the mat. Adam's doing a good job getting on an ankle and pulling him down, but Hayes is going to... Yeah, two coming there. Yeah. A lot of takedowns so far here, Glenn. Yeah, let's see if Hayes works on top here a little bit with 30 to go. Adams, of course, knows his job here, which is not to give up bonus points. But you have to wrestle, and you know Chuck Letter is not going to waste time either. He he will be quick to call a stall or a stalemate to to get the offensive wrestler back in a, a better position. But time ticks out here. No points scored there, so comfortable period for Hayes. This may be one of those keys to the match, Schuylkill Valley sports keys of the match that we, we talked about earlier where Hayes needs to get some bonus points here. Speak of Schuylkill Valley, Glenn. Rock Tom North. Vivacqua, and Rock, yeah. yeah, Tom Vivacqua and his staff and his team are outfitted with A6 gear through Schuylkill Valley Sports. Same shirt you were wearing last night. Yep. The it's, white the white shirt is hot. Schuylkill Valley Sports is the official wrestling retail partner of PA Wrestling. Well, Hayes looking for a cradle here. He's got it locked up. See if he can adjust here. No, he can't. Hayes has to get out to the side here and work something. Looking for a high half. Nothing really there. Adam's really bottoming out and, you know, bellying down and really making it hard for Hayes to work on top here. There's that stall call. And I am wired in with Chuck Letter tonight. The earpiece is directly from me, and I just put on my stripes. 
I don't have a PIAA patch yet, though. Trying to earn that. He's trying to step into a pit leg here to help him out on top, but again, Adams is kind of basing out and really not exposing himself a whole lot. Now Hayes is going to cut him with 48 to go here in the second. Nice shot by Hayes. Easy takedown. He may have to go cut, you know, cut him and release him here. A yep. little, you know, go fishing. I'd like to see Hayes in on those underhooks. He's dangerous here. It's hard. It's Mike's, Mike's struggling to keep up the scoring here in these first two bouts. All the takedowns are getting rung up. Oh, he's looking, looking for maybe a mixer here. I don't know. Bounces it. Nice. Good front headlock. Not, not doing anything with it. Only 10 to go. Go out of bounds. Five. Brian Adams kind of brings up some memories for me, Joe, back in college. Summer of 69? Oh, no, no. Run to you. <laughs> my favorite. Hands down. Great song. Not straight from the heart? Nope. Run to you. Might not have to play that on the way home tonight. Now. Exactly. A nice uh, spin behind there by Sammy Hayes as he increases his lead. And still trying to build this major decision. Get it solid. He's up six right now. He's going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. I I, I would think that they would. Oh, nice. Felt. Yeah, nice duck. Oh, duck there. That, that Rock North was thinking five or six here. A absolutely, and, I and, agree. You know, now it's an eight-point lead. He's only a major decision criteria. He's going to cut him, which is going to take it out of it momentarily. Yeah, and this is one where, you know, Adams knows his job. Yeah. And uh, he, he has frustrated Sammy Hayes a little bit. Sammy's not showing it, but he's definitely frustrated. Adams has not exposed himself at all on the bottom and has not wrestled uh, from we, that bottom position. We haven't seen a set it back yet. No. Trying to dig a bar in. See if Hayes gets angry here and digs one in and tries for a turn. Look at that tight waist show, yeah. bringing it all the way around. All the way in the far hip. Yeah, it's nice. This is this is kind of their, this rocks more at the beginning of their little murder's row here with these three back to back to back. We'll see if there's any funny business or any, any guys put in on, on uh, Rock North side. Uh, I think Rock North has to show first at 52. I think they have the odds. If memory serves correct, Cy had the choice in that first match. Yeah, it looks like they're going to wrestle this thing straight up, though, with uh, Sammy coming out at 45. I know they made some moves over the weekend at the Rock Yard Duels, bumping those guys up. Obviously, it helped them in the L and J match. I don't know if they're, they're planning to do that tonight. But it's nice to have that flexibility with the, this run here. So it looks like Hayes is in to ride it out here. Brian yeah. Adams, if he escapes, it takes it out of that criteria. So. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised um, that they didn't go back neutral. You know, because Sammy Hayes is dangerous. Yeah, he's and he was toss. taking him down at will. Now he's got to ride him. But it looks like he'll get it here with under 10 to go. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, they, maybe they're just going to take that four and... Yeah, they're, I think they're, uh, the coaching staff seems to be like that's where they needed to be. Again, Rock's won. Rock's out. Coaching staff very happy with Brian Adams not going out. Brad Silvery out letting them know. And then we got uh, Cam Robinson yep. showing for North. Not sure who they're sending out here for South. He's now wrestling at 152 pounds. Oh, beautiful duck there by Cam. Two takedowns under, you know, basically 10 seconds there. Robinson, he's senior. Cerulli in on a shot, but Robinson fights off. He's oh, going, he's going that. He's got yep. that cradle now. He's got that low leg cradle. He's yeah, behind the leg now. He's got Cerulli in trouble. Oh, Cam, Cerulli fighting off. Yeah, Cam's, Look how, Cam's so lanky. Elbows. Yeah. 
so much slack in those arms. It's only a matter of time before he rolls and puts him back on that on those shoulders. Yeah, Kim's got to readjust just yeah. a little bit here, trying to get chest on chest. There it is. So that's the momentum that North is looking for here in this murderer's row. And Dylan Shee's coming right on out. I think yeah. North is very comfortable with their lineup moving all the way through the top here. And not, uh, it's not Kalajezi. No, this is uh, Malinevsky, I believe. Am I saying that right? Martinovsky. Martinovsky, I'm sorry about that. Martinovsky. She he ranked number one in the region right now in the latest PA wrestling rankings. Quiet, got quiet here. Yeah. Dylan She, as we know, going to the Naval Academy. Um, not to correct you, but Army. Oh, jeez, Army, oh, my God. Oh, that, boy. That's blasphemous. Oh, boy, these guys, I'm yeah. in big trouble. Yep. Go Army, go Navy. Yeah. I don't pick sides. Great job in that front headlock. He's tough there with those short arms. He, and his short arm offense is, uh, you know, really tough. She is a senior. Current record, 19 wins, two losses. She likes to work on top. He loves to get in scrambles. And that Connor Quinn match was just crazy this past weekend. Trying to dig in a reinforced bar there, Joe. And that seems to be a really popular, you know, uh, top, you know, move. Not only score back points, but pinning combination here throughout the district. So many things you do from it. Yeah. You can run it, you can stack it, you can sim in that into that uh, tilt out of it. Marcinovsky really slowing the match down here, though. She, nice knees, she knees loves slide, the flurries. Yeah, yeah, he's up. There's an escape. Two to one here. And they're uh, about 22 seconds to go in the first period. You know, and kind of seeing a little something from... Council Rock South here. They're they're defending their home gym and their title in the Suburban One League National that they've held for many years. And the Memorial Cup at that too. Yeah, and, and, and I I kind of see it a little bit in these you know early bouts where South seems to be understanding of what they need to do out on the mat, and I think the pressure might be on North. And when I thought it was going to be on South to defend, and you know they're down a little bit coming off a rough. Uh, lost last night to Quakertown, it seems like that pressure may actually be on North, you know, to, to get the job done finally. they got to get the monkey off their back, too. Yeah. I mean, that, that's got to weigh heavy on their uh, on their psyche. Skittles are, are calling me, Joe. I've had, like, a lot of good, good, you know, response to the Skittles. <laughs> we, might, we might be turning Glenn's mic down. <laughs> No, I'm going to stay away from the Skittles. The grilled cheese filled me up. Yeah, very slow match here now. Martinovsky's really slowed it down. Not sure if uh, she's going to take a different approach here to score points. But this is one where, again, we talked earlier that, you know, with the keys of the match, that, you know, they're going to need to score bonus points with their with their studs. And right now, Martinovsky keeping it tight. Yeah. He's not doing a whole lot on bottom. I see I see a Stalin call in the future. Trying to go maybe a little Blair bar. So he's trying to roll with. Minute as we hit the midpoint of the match, we're running clock. Yeah, the other thing is these guys really do know each other, so it makes it difficult, you know, really to kind of open up and go get it when you know these guys know each other so well coming through you know the midget program the apache program you know postseason workouts and things like that so you know everyone's kind of cautious out there can you imagine if this school had stayed together you know i mean just you just wonder about that so we get potentially dangerous stoppage there glenn and she worked almost 90 seconds to get it to get to that point and to have the stoppage, and it's you know it's unfortunate. I mean, it, 
you know, it is what it is. Our, our official here makes that makes that call. It's a judgment call. He felt it was in the criteria for danger, but yeah, that's a lot of time that that Martinovsky just bled off the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she's got a cradle. Yeah. It's awkward. No sooner did I say oh. that than did he lock up a cradle. We got under ten to go. I don't know if he's got it locked. Turn. Now he's got it locked. Yeah, he's got to come back. He's got to jump up this way here. Yeah, Marcinowski doing a great job fighting that off. Yeah. Well, she's going to go down here. You can imagine her coming back to that cradle. Yeah. I don't think uh, she realized that was there in that second period, but he did at the end. So we'll see what he does here off the bottom. I expect him to come right up and out. Does get to his feet. I think she's got to, you know, maybe take a chance here with something big. See if he can get some backs. He's burying his head, looking for that cradle. So tough in that front headlock. Yeah. He's looking for that cradle again, Joe. Couldn't get it. He'll take the two. Coach Vavaka wants she to cut. Yep. Marcinowski. So she's got to get busy here either way. And Marcinowski, you know, doing a great job in this match. Still nothing yet. Nothing here. Marcinowski trying to turn the corner. Trying to sit him down. Great job by Sheen trying to scramble out of it. Nothing yet. He's got to work up. He keeps those lit. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's giving. He stopped wrestling a little bit there. And he let Sheehy get back yeah, in it. Yeah, hips are phenomenal. Posting that head now, trying to get his own two coming around the back. He clears that leg. He's got it. Nope. Little pancake yet, there. No. Yet. There it is. Oh. Get the arm and. I think that's two now for Sheehy. So 6'2", 34 seconds to go. Does he go again or no? He's just going to ride this out. Glenn, if you watch the Rock North guys in the stands there sitting next to the Council Rock South bench, making sure they're calling out every point scored and staring at them. Love what this rivalry is. And I was gonna, we're, we're in a competitive uh, match here right now. Yes, we are. Mr. Robinson on the end there. He's loving it. So a nice win, though, for Dylan Chi. And uh, Joel Marcinowski's a, a pretty – Solid wrestler, so All right. don't take anything hey, away Rock from him. Nor Rock Norris left some left some points on the table there. Yes, they did. Nonetheless, they're up 13 to five. Now we'll Here see comes Kyle Jesse, Matt Kyle Jesse, for Council Rock South. We know all about him. State qualifier no, 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 as a freshman. Brendan Hardy, your old boss. And Brandon Hardy. Yeah, let's see if Hardy, Hardy can can last six minutes with Kyle Jesse because that's got to be his job right now and, and limit the damage here because this will put Council Rock South right back in this match after, you know, three hard-earned wins, really, I mean, outside of Robinson's fall. Nice shot headed outside. He was going double. Now he's switching off. Now there's the double again. He almost has that low leg Turk. Tried to. Nice finish. Right into his tilt. Call Jesse tough on top, so we'll see if he gets to work. On the restart here as they go back in. Minute four left in the first period. Cuts them and he's going to go to work a little bit on his feet. You know, and this is where Council Rock South has a little flexibility with Kyle Jesse here going, you know, 60 or 70. Because he's been down, right, to 60, is that correct? Correct. So, you know, that kind of is a little little bit of a advantage for for South with the matchups. But as we move up here, I think, you know, it's going to be some of those toss-up matches that we talked about in the Keys of the Match, sponsored by Schuylkill Valley Sports. 
But Kyle Jesse has to get busy here, too. I mean, he needs to get some bonus points here for South. I mean, this is one where when you, you look at that and say, this is where we need to get bonus. Hardy doing a nice job defending. Offensive efforts by Kyle Jesse. Eight seconds to go. When they cut him before, I figured they probably figured they were going to score again. Yeah. No, like I said, Hardy's doing his job right now. He's wrestling tough. And let's see if he can get his own offense going. And again, you know, very similar level of intensity here for North and South, like we saw last night at Owen James, Boyertown, and certainly the type of, you know, uh, intensity you'll see with Springford Owen J later on. Um, but almost like a, it's almost too tense for, for the wrestlers out there. They don't seem to be opening up like we normally see these guys do, particularly Kyle Jazzy. Good snap down to the line. Nothing yeah. yet. Scoring on nothing defense. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Hardy coming back over. He's got Kyle Jazzy in trouble. Ah, Kyle Jazzy way to wrestle out of it. Good wizard there, though. Yep. Still hanging in there. Kyle Jesse going to look to maybe table out or lift it, get some height with that ankle. Yeah, Hardy's got to stay in on the Swizzle with the hip. Yep. If he changes his position, he could be in trouble. A little bow and arrow there would work. A little navy ride there. Yep. A little navy finish. This is going to be big, and they called him out of bounds. Yeah, they were out. out. Yeah, they were out. Yep. Clearly he out. Goes two and Gave two, him though. two back. So Chuck Letter does the right thing there. Gives him two backs, but they were clearly out of bounds yeah, on that one. As soon as Kyle Jesse's knees came down, yep. he, he blew it. And that, that's the way you do it. 7-1, just like that, kind of busts this match open here in the second period. Yeah, I mean, Hardy was hanging in there, too. That wizard got him in trouble with that Navy finish. And he hooked up that head quickly, too. Now he's coming with a big, tight bar here. This could be trouble for Hardy. 50 to go. A lot of time to yep. settle in. It's Not much high. up there. He's got to get those hips down. Maybe adjust a little bit. Pretty tight. That inside shoulder's up. Makes an adjustment here. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Arm. We got a good vision of it right here. Yep. There it is. Yes. So call up Jesse. Just... Puts Council Rock South right back in the match with the fall. That's huge. That has been going to 182. That is huge. So now we're getting into these, you know, matches where kind of has some toss-up bouts here. And South sends out. Not sure who that is. Now wrestling at 182 pounds, the Indians, Damian Rowe, your Golden Hawks, Lucas Doyle. So Doyle comes out for South. Familiar name here, Council Rock South. And Aiden Rowe from North. So kind of, you know, siding here with South. Doyle obviously with a little more experience than Rowe. Doyle's been wrestling well of late, as, as you can check your oh, no. Rowe tries to throw him, and he goes right to his back. Doyle's got him there. He's got him in trouble. A lot of time left. Minute 22 left. He's already got his full set of back. Rowe looks like he might get off, but Doyle trying to catch that half before he gets back to his belly. He's got that low leg Turk, so Rowe's going to have trouble getting off. Maybe he needs to go a little far side claw here, Flynn. Now he's going to... Yeah, Rose trying to spell it out. He does his job there because that, that could have been disastrous for the Indians giving up six early in that match. I mean, that would have been, you know, a big turn. Doyle's not letting off on the pressure now. He lets go of that bar. Comes back with a cross face, trying to get some backs. Throws a leg, and Doyle's long. Yep. Now he's got a boot in. Imagine yeah. out of Doyle with, putting some boots in. Glenn, it's like watching Brother Joe. Yeah. We 
got 16 seconds to go here in the first period. It's still 5 nothing lead for Doyle. He's got that bar in, see if he's able to run it. He's got a half. Yep. That bar on her wrist. Now he's trying to run that here. bar. He's got to drop that elbow. He couldn't yeah. do it. Bro fought that off. And that's Good how thing, the period. Yeah, I see Doyle kind of with two periods left here. He, he, may, uh, he, may, he may wear him down. Yeah, he may take over here oh. from the top position. Yeah, he go, and he takes the top, top position. Here we go. I don't even know. I think I think that was Coach Waterman that told him to go top there. I don't know if that was he, he Coach looks Silver Waterman. He looks <laughs> juiced up. I wonder if we're going to see Waterman Lucerne. and Lucerne oh, or Waterman know. and Hauserman. Yeah, it's good. so we're going to yeah, see so a good he, one, he's, man. He's going, you know, his senior year, he wants to defend this gym. You know that. Yeah, when I interviewed Waterman earlier in the year right here at the scrimmage, he said, I don't care if I wrestle Lucerne. Yeah. You know, so... Doyle looking to go cross face cradle. Nice going look inside Lake Turk. Going back and forth. Might have the cradle yeah. locked up now. Let's see if he's bumping the hip, bumping the hip. He's, he's got to nice stay on that side. Yeah, it's in, and bump sit him, him back. Off or pull him back yeah. here towards us. He's not going to bump him off. He's got too yeah, wide of a base. got to sit him back. Yeah, he's going to let go of it. Yeah, that overhead cradle, you got to really bump him off. Now he's got that pit leg in. See if he goes near side here. The cradle. Hey, little three quarter Nelson here. Yeah, he's going back to that bar. Yeah. He's now showing he's us everything. He needs to just pick one and go yeah, with it. Yeah, I agree. Here he goes. He's going to run this bar now. Drops that elbow here, Joe. It's yep. going to be big yep. trouble. He's there it is. The far side. One big step towards the head there. Gets those. Now you got to step past the head. He's using that knee yep. on the nose. Now Tell you, Rose fighting it off, though. Yeah, he's doing a good him. job. He's got 45 seconds. He's got a long time, long time to fight it off. Now he's kind of just shaking and like dropping those hips out and trying to break them. Oh, he catch that head. He's got him in yeah, this is real trouble. No, oh, no, Rowe. he fell it down. Wow. Good hips there by Rowe to get out of trouble. Yep. Eight is nothing it? is a score. It's a major decision criteria now. We've got 20 seconds to go in the second period. Let's see if he goes back to that bar. He was in trouble three different times there, Joe. Yeah. It's like a cat out there. Nine lives. Whew. Got six left. And again, you know, Dan Gable used to say, you know, attrition, you just wear the guy down with the same move over and over and over again, and you'll eventually break a man and get it. And, you know, Doyle's kind of been all over the place, like we said, with different pinning combinations. He really needs to go back to one, you know, maybe his best finish. And, and here we are it. taking top is uh, Aiden Rowe. Doyle tripods up, comes up to his feet. Wrote us a good job kind of seatbelting that. Running the pipe the other way. Now Doyle's coming back around here. There it is, 10 0. He's got to be thinking more at this point. Oh, absolutely. Stalemate. Good call there. You know, you look over to the side there, you got. You know, Trap McCormick, you got head coach Brad Silm Perry. You got Knobloch over there. You know, you got three guys. You got some Rappos, I see. Yeah, the Rappos, you know, they, they've been over at Del Val this year a little bit, coaching at Del Val, Delaware Valley College. and University. Right? Yeah, not spending as much time here. Oh, right, not, it used to be, what it used to be, DVC, right? Yeah. Now it's the university. Um, but, yeah, just, just great, great coaching staff. Here at Council Rock South, and kids know how to respond. Doyle digging right now. He's got that arm across the back. See what he does with it. Rodin, good job. Wait, Doyle slips the that bar. That is a wing. It. I don't know if Letter's going to let this go. He is. Kind of think he's that's watching. He's all over yeah, it. He Great is. job by Rowe. Yeah, Rowe's fighting I'm, everything I'm off. I'm impressed with this guy. He's got a lot of fight in him. And for his, uh, uh, back again, there's that wing to a bar. He's getting oh, this back. one's tight. This one's trouble. This is trouble here. He's losing the bar, time, though. 30, to se 30 seconds. He's up. losing that arm. Great job by Rowe. 13 nothing will be your score here after the full set. He's got to stay off his back now. 20 to go. Coming out, coming out the mixer. And he gets hit strong again. 14 nothing. 
Stay down, young man. He gets one neutral as they go to the wood. So it's 14 1. We got Six here. seconds. They really want this bonus for the tech. Oh, Dual shoots it. Oh, there it is. Wow. At the buzzer. Doyle rules. Woo. New winner by technical ball in six minutes. Final score 16 1. Lucas Doyle. So Doyle puts South out in front 16 13. We are in a nail biter of a it's match right, right now. now. Oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is a back and forth you kind of expect it to. So here we have. Uh, Gianni Gilch coming out for South. As we know, he's clearly a favorite here. Another Rowe brother, Alex Rowe. So again, you know, this is a spot where South is looking, you know, big for bonus. I think 220 is kind of a toss up match and then 285 is going to be a good one yeah it's going to be very interesting coming around you know here uh, with the, the lightweights you know finishing this match off Gilch another guy in this match is going D1 Virginia Military Institute next fall to further his academic and athletic careers. EMI. Yes, sir. Gilt's trying to plow through him there. And good job by Rowe to defend that. Nice underhook. Rowe's not backing down here. Plenty of match space here on this mat. Yeah. To to allow that wrestling to continue. Josh has him at over runner. Oh, he got the mixer. Oh. Gilch getting real heavy on the head there. Now he's looking for that mixer again. See if he can bounce it. Now he's just taking his two there. Smart by Gilch. Get on the board. Two nothing. Which, which so little time left in the period. We can come away with something. Yeah. Locking hands there by Rowe, so free move for Gilt. Chibi takes advantage of a little sit back. Love that whack back. Yeah. He didn't really uh, go for it, but he was thinking. Caution there on Gilt trying to cheat the whistle. Why not? So, you know, let's talk, Joe, a little bit about this match and what it means, you know, kind of district-wide. I mean, last night we saw Owen J. Roberts, you know, kind of handle uh, Boyertown. You know, I was not surprised, but, you know, two really good Pac-10 teams in Owen J. Roberts and Springport and two really good teams here right now in Council Rock 
north of Council Rock South, you know, South still kind of, you know, they're going to they're gonna lead the, the pack and be that number one seed until someone really knocks them off. Well, it happened last night with Quakertown. And, you know, Quakertown uh, has a very solid lineup. And, you know, we throw them in the mix with the top four now with Westchester, Henderson, Downingtown East is on the move. Um, the Chamonix, Downingtown West. I mean, this thing is wide open. Glenn, I couldn't agree more. And I, and I, I joked uh, uh, off the air with uh, with one of the uh, Council Rock uh, South's faithful fans, Seaball. Uh, uh, for those of you who know, I'm on the forum. I said if we picked four teams right now, we thought we're going to district duels. There's a good chance that we're both hitting under 50% on those four teams that are going to states uh, out of our uh, I agree. out of our region. Uh, and, and you know, so. And as expert rankers as our as we are. Uh, not a good move there by. Oh uh, yeah, this is trouble the, here. Gilch got him. He's got one foot out. I don't know if they're going to give him anything. He's holding on for dear life. Gilch pops out and he gets the two. Makes it five nothing here with a minute and twenty seven left in. And the a good job here. by Bro with there at the last minute to bail too, or that could have been big trouble. Like I was saying, you're right. Even the expert rankers like ourselves, I mean, we're, we're going to be about fifty percent from the beginning of the year. I really believe that. Got that near side cradle locked up. Oh, that's, that's tight. tight. See if he goes for a Volrath cradle and tries and scoops it. going to stay on this year. I, I, I'd bail on that leg. You don't need it. Nah, we talked about this yesterday. Yeah. I, like the, I like going to the low leg. Yeah. But if you're on Now he's going for the Volrath yeah. cradle here now. You can get this here. This is real tight. This is big yeah. trouble. A lot of time. This is bad news for North. There it is. So Kiltz comes out, does his job, gets the fall, and here comes Council Rock South with a nine-point lead. 22-13, yeah. heading into 195. And we're through seven bouts. Or I'm sorry, 220. Talked to Coach Stone Perry before the match, and he said, you know, we're going to win seven tonight. You know, just like last night, it's going to matter about these bonus points. And right now, you know, back and forth a little bit, but right now South has a little bit of an edge in the in the team victory. So, Council Rock. We've got Brendan Patchinson, Panchison. Yeah, Panchison out for South. Panchison back to the sport. Hasn't wrestled in a while and rejoined the team. And he's doing a pretty good job here for South uh, this season. I think he actually placed uh, in one of the tournaments during the early part of the season, either uh, King of the Mountain or uh, Cumberland Valley kickoff. You have to check your stats on that, Joe, for me. We have uh, Ronnie... Uh, El Baruki for Council Rock North. And again, this is one where, you know, North needs to limit the damage, you know, try and steal a win. But if, uh, you know, Panchinson can wrestle like he's been wrestling all season long here, I think he can get a fall. And that's going to really blow it wide open for for South, you know, coming back around. Now, I know that this 285 bound match is going to be tough uh, for South to win. But, you know, Cavantini coming in at 106, I mean, he's going to be hungry after last night's loss. So I, I can't wait for this thing to come around, Joe. We're going to see some exciting wrestling uh, for five weight classes from 106 to 132. This is a toss-up match, and, you know, this one's going to go a long way. You know, you talked about being seven, seven matches in. We're 4-3 in favor of the... Uh, home squad of oh, rookies can't back out there. He nice did. job he wrestling back in. Yeah. He possibly could have got fleeing the mat or a stall of doing that. Nice job. Oh, nice job. Nice down. job on that spin behind though. Panchison wearing the swimmer's cap to cover that long hair he's got. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be a mullet. I mean, that's just long hair, Joe. Yeah. Boy, you know, Maximus Hale, he he tightened his lid up. The Rock Yard Duels, I couldn't even go over and talk to him about his hair. He looks so good. Haven't seen him yet in person yet. Looking forward to. He always has it uh, looking tip-top shape for postseason. There are a couple other guys on that down in town west that look great uh, with, the, with the mullet. So, so It's definitely a lifestyle. It's not, uh, it's yeah. not just a haircut. Yeah, it, it's it's good stuff. Coach Vivaco over there coaching his tail off. Yeah, and he's going to have to right now through these next couple bouts. 
Yeah, Dominic Pintura's ball was fabulous. Do either um, compare a Clayton Ulrey? I mean, Clayton Ulrey, where <laughs> is he still permanent? So. <laughs> I, I, that's that's a tough call. I um, think Pintura had a little little style on that thing. You know what I mean? Hey, you got again, it's lifestyle. You do your, you make it your own. Yeah, you gotta let it, you gotta let it grow wild. So, God, I'm noticing. It looks like Panthersons like slowed down a little bit. He has, and, and you know, uh, El Baruki's settling in. You know, made a little bit of nerves. I think he's Sorry. a little more comfortable right now, yep. Ronnie, in this match, and Panthersons maybe a pressing a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think that's what I see. I mean, you're saying he's slowing down. I, th I kind of think he's pressing a little bit. Seems like he is a little winded. I, I did see that he was out a couple of matches. I'm not sure uh, what that was all about. So maybe he is a little, you know, out of shape coming back, but. You know, again, like you said, this is a toss-up bout. I mean, this is huge for both teams. Hey, with this night off, Glenn, I've noticed in the crowd we see a lot of officials in District 1, uh, you know, here taking it in, watching the match. Pretty neat to see, the, you know, a lot of people coming out, and, you know. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday night, night good, yeah. good night to have a match. And we've gotten away from that, and I really think the all-Wednesday night matches are great for the sport because – uh, it gives an opportunity for other fans to get out and see good teams wrestle, as well as, you know, officials and other coaches and, you know, the, the, the wrestling community can come out and see a great match. I mean, I've seen a lot of folks here tonight that I haven't seen in a while, and uh, it, it's great to see them all come together for this type of match. So one left in the lead here. We're past the midpoint of, the, of this match. And we have Dancing Bears, Joe. We do. We do. I knew it was only a matter of time for one of us said it. I was holding out, letting you, you uh, be the first. Nice shrug attempt there by Panson. Doesn't follow with anything. Gets a shot there. He's picking up the pace. Oh, we got to be careful here. The rookie tackles him, but the uh, goes over him, and Panson lands on top. A little sloppy there with Panson yeah. winning the scramble, Joe. Ooh, oh, Ronnie comes right back around with a reversal of his own. So here we go now. All you have to do is say Dancing Bears, they start wrestling. Under five seconds to go here. All right, we got a wrestling match. Broke out right here in yep. the gym in front of us. Yep. North Bench is up. They are fired up. I think both guys agreed that last five seconds there to no one doing anything. <laughs> I think they said something yeah. to each other. Hey, if you don't move, I'm not going to move. Let's just get in this third period. I've been there. <laughs> I have been there. We've all been there. Third period. Caution on Panchison on top. Yep, Baruki chooses. El Baruki chooses down. can't believe you're even trying to say that name. I think I'm right. Yeah, if I'm, I think if you I'm, nailed it good. If I'm wrong, I, I apologize, Ronnie. I'm sticking to Ronnie. Yeah. I enjoy the challenge, Glenn. Yep. That's why you get paid the big bucks. So Patches needs to go to work on top here. He, you know, he's holding a 3-2 lead. Ronnie needs to get moving. Yeah, El Baruki's not going to do much with the head on the mat. Here he comes, basing up, trying to work his way up, get a little pressure back. Good job by Patchen going near yeah, ankles. Good move right getting out down. the side there. Oh, he tries to suck him back in. Ronnie looking for a big man roll. I don't think uh -oh, it's there, though. Oh, he's got though. locked. No, he's got, he's got ooh. Patchenson slipped the arm. I don't think we've seen the last of that attempt. That. Now Patch got that far side half. Now Baruki. Ronnie's got to stand up here with yeah. that. Nothing there. No control whatsoever. Letter's got to be thinking something here, either stalling on top or or bottom. I mean, you go either way. Rookie to his feet. Here we go. Both guys look just physically exhausted right now. Under a minute to go here in the match. 3-2 lead for Brendan Panchinson. Both teams going with the white singlet side, too. Crawling out of bounds. I don't think that was intentional, though. They're out right now. So, 41 to go. It's going it's to come down to who wants it more, Joe. Hands on the hip for Panthenson, so... Oh, Baruki's got to really get after here off the bottom position. Not much at the whistle. I could be trouble because Hanson can get heavy in a hurry on him. He does. He reaches for that far knee, but not a whole lot of wrestling going now, on. El Baruki to his feet. Hanson's got to work up. 
and he's not going to hang there for 20 seconds. He breaks oh, it. He breaks it now. See if he's going to spin behind or is he going to get one? Oh, he busts him down. Got to get one. 13 seconds. Got to go get here. one. Got to get one. There. There's one. Oh man. Wait there it is. He's got, the, he's got the two. Whoa. Oh, oh. Wow. He doesn't get the That's cover. Everybody gets the one. Ties it. We're going overtime. First overtime oh, match all here. All he do is lay on him for the two there. He knows it too. Yeah, let her let it wrestle out. I kind of like that. Yep. That's the first time we saw wrestling on the edge, Joe. Yep. For a good 20, 25 seconds. I love it. All right, here we go. Takedown wins it. See if someone sells out here. Now Baruki taking a few deep breaths like he's going to come at him. The north band section is up. A lot of motion, a lot of motion on El Baruki. He's going to shoot him out here. Yeah, El Baruki seems to be wrestling a little smarter right now. The pants and pants and really sucking win. Yes, he wants an oxygen tank. Fans are yelling for Ronnie. Let's see if North can get one here. I mean, this would be a big steal for them, I think. Oh, he ducks. Oh, nice duck. Didn't yeah. finish, though. Again, he goes again. Let's see if he can snap and spin 20 here. 20 seconds to go. Hanson shoots in. Well, that's dangerous shooting in with a bad shot, Joe, yeah. right now. Both guys are now exhausted. Yep, both guys are really overtime. getting everything. This is, this is really When's crazy. the last time these two guys were in overtime? Both crowds getting into it now. This is a really cool environment going on right now. Getting loud behind us for Sun the Rock South Side. A good snap. Looks like we're going to ride out. Here we go. So, just a reminder out there, they will count all points here yep. in the first Both two 30 seconds periods, 30 will, seconds. will happen. Rock North wins a toss, and they go down. To Mr. Robinson over there, out of his seat, urging Ronnie on. TJ England over there. I mean, you got everyone's out for this match tonight. Elber rookie to his feet. Up. Hanson hanging on that ankle. Oh, that could be a stall there. He's hanging on. Let's see if Chuck Letter lets that go a second time. Baruki looks like the fresher of the two wrestlers right now. I agree. Coach Stone Perry right. trying to get his guys going. Here they go. South fans behind us now. Let the, let the crowd. Ten seconds the now. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I know he's crawling out of bounds, but what's Pantsy's been doing for the breakdown? He just kind of followed him out. So six seconds left, and Pantsy's been kind of doing his job by hanging on. We'll see what Ronnie's got in his top position. He's got to explode one time. There it is. He's Damn. up. See me clear here. There it is. There, oh, no stalling call either. All right, all right. Save, here we go. Second that's called 30. Saved by the bell. Yep. Good show. It was. All right, here we go. Crawling back to middle is Brendan Patch. I'm thinking ultimate ride out. We haven't seen one yet. Have yeah. Pan, if it goes that far, Panchison has the choice because he scored first. Brad Silm Perry willing the crowd to get up and pitch is up. Nice play oh. by El Baruki and they go back out of bounds. No change. Wow. El Baruki stays on top. They weren't going out of bounds. Panchison was out. Fans on both sides on their feet. Place is insane right now. Last 23 seconds of this second of two rideouts. Panchison up again. Nice return back. by Ronnie. Ooh, he's got a bar oh, in. He's got a bar in, but he's a little high. Got 13 seconds. Oh, he's on that arm. And there it is. And reverse. One and two. It's over. Wow, Panchison comes from behind, really, because Ronnie had turned the tide there. 
Wow, 25-13. Hanchison doesn't look so good. He's going to, yep, he's thrown up. Almost didn't make it off the mat. I missed that. I didn't. All over that, are you? So, Council Rock South right now. Golden Hawks out. 25-13 as we move up into the heavyweights here. This isn't the normal is not, heavyweight for This is the Dom Deertree. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon Burkheyer. So Max Arar out for North. And Burkheyer, who wrestled last night, I know. I'll tell you, Harar is a big guy. He's just a junior still. Really great job in that passes his hands, he gets to his legs, and he gets his takedown. A little shrug or shuck by. Berghire back to his feet, but not to escape yet. Oh, puts him right on his back. This can be huge. That's trouble. And there's oh, the over. fall in 36 seconds. Talk about stealing momentum. Get and brings that. it back to a six-point yeah. match as we roll over to the little guys. Here we go, Joe. I, I just put my headgear on. In case they need you to suit up. I think oh, that's yeah. eligibility left. No, I'm just I'm getting excited here. Kinney so. coming out for Kevin Kinney coming out for the Rocks for Rock South. Dylan Savard for North. This would be a good one. Savard has been wrestling well of late. Now Obviously, Kenny with the, the length advantage here, but Savard is a crafty youngster for North. One of those guys that's, you know, up and coming. So we'll see what he can give Kenny. Kenny's coming off a tough loss last night to Borgio from Quaker Town. So he's got to be motivated. He gets a quick two here, spin behind. Kenny right to work on top. He's got that house. Oh, He's man, got him in trouble. That's all over. Wow. Wow, that was close. That was quick. That is. That's really quick. And you just wonder how Council Rock South does it. You know, this is one where, you know, it's North's time, you know, to shine. It's, it's an opportunity for them to actually beat their neighbor rival. And Council Rock South is just... Stepped it up a notch. And here we have Aiden Burke for North. Oh, sorry. Oh, my God. Aiden's brother, Anthony Burke. We got Chris Carter, Carter out for the uh, Golden Hawks. Mark Carter, any relation? Do you think? No, I don't think there's any relation. Burke in on the shot. Head inside single. They're passing those hands. Harner up to the challenge. Now he sits him back down in the butt. Still countering is Harner. Burke's still on that leg. He's got to circle that side and get that right elbow to the mat. Harner doing a great job. Now, something to keep in mind, Harner's got about an eight-pound advantage on him because Burke's down at weight in at 106 today. Yeah, and that's what they've been doing with Burke and Savard all year long, moving these guys up. Burke has kind of been the man to go up with a little more experience. Again, we're talking about eliminating, you know, this this 106 pound weight class, and I don't know why. Mike can tell me why, because all the forfeits, but. And Burke. Burke does a nice job cut. there. Nice job fighting that off. Came right out the bat. Now he's looking at bar. He's got that reinforced, Joe. You know I like this. He loses the reinforced part of the bar, but still digging. Looking for prying those fingers back, trying to get the double bar. I don't know if he got it or not. No, it looks like he has the arm trapped on that far yeah, side. Yeah, kind of hooked it, in. yeah. Kids forget about that hook. That hook is always there. 23 seconds going to first period, and Burke is up three. Yeah, going to bounce. 20 seconds go. Burke with a 2 nothing lead here early on. Honor rubbing that shoulder a little bit. Yeah, gee, he just got it torqued yeah. up by Burke. Burke. Yeah, he was pretty physical with it. We're going to have a tough time with our uh, wrestler of the match. You, know, you look tonight. at 
we got this match and three more, and we still have the names Man. of Hauserman, Lucerne, Waterman, Waterman, and uh, Savardinov. Oh, yeah. We got so, you. I mean, we got guys coming up. I mean, you know, sprinkle another wrestler or two in there, not names. Ooh, he's going to try and tilt him up here. He's going to slip the bar. Yeah, we got reinforced bar now, and we run out of time. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one tonight. Pick this wrestler. The match sponsored by A6. And Schuylkill Valley Sports. And Schuylkill Valley Sports, our partner in wrestling here at PAWrestling.com. Obviously, seeing a lot of ASICs wear tonight on that Council Rock North side. Smart guys over there. Oh, yeah. ASICs doesn't make a sports coat. Otherwise, uh, Coach Stone Perry and his staff would have them. Oh, yeah. You got a totally different dress squad over here. Burke in on a shot again, and nice he job. gets the two. M runs his lead to 4-0. Hunter looking to get up. Knee slide try comes out, but Hunter does, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Burke does a nice job of bringing him back. Yeah, Burke, Burke has some real nice quickness there. Yeah, he's, and he, he's, like a, he's like a blanket on top. He has those hips on hips, and he, he causes uh, some trouble for the guys on bottom. So he goes back to that reinforced bar. There he is. He was having got it in in the end of the first period. I was trying to, I was going to go up the bucket there. Yeah. Little pump handle. Try and go inside like Turk on the cross wrist, but Honor able to get back to his knees and build his base. He's trying to pull that in with a little tilt. Uh, little got tilt it. Here, yep. Letters all over it. Great job. You got two count or three count. Home two back. Yeah, good job by Burke there to get the bats. Anthony Burke's really stepped it up here for the Indians, and they, and they need it. I mean, they need it. Bonus points will be at a premium from here on out, Glenn. Oh, yeah. One with conventional wisdom tells you that, depending on what the matchups are, of course. Yeah, definitely. A six-point lead, you know, that's right in the, the situation where you could have a tie, bat, tie match at the end. To start counting those up. There we go. Nice job by... Burke here trying to open him up. He we does. 10, and Rock South has won six. Oh, he's got that, like, he's got far side claw, and he's looking to get, ah, saved by the bell again. Yeah, it's twice now. Burke, nice switch attempt at the whistle. Nothing there. Yeah, Burke, Burke definitely is wrestling a little bit better in this yep. match than Harner. Nice little uh, step over with that switch. Yep, and he is now in major decision criteria. So Yeah, I mean, he's blanketing Harner right now, 8-0. And he's going to ride tough on top and look for some backs. Nice tight waist there by Burke. See if we can chop this and look for that bar again. Looking for that tilt here, Joe. Here it comes. Running it. Got it. Got, got a, a one, one count. count. See if can settle in. Nope, nope. Got a couple ones. Hunter fighting it off. Minute left in the match. Now he's going bar hook. Oh, he's hook hooking again. it. Nice job by Burke. Nice shot by Harner oh, as well. Caught that off. Now he's going inside nice the Turk. Oh, he's got him in trouble now. Oh, wow. Good job, Harner fighting. Now another one swipe. Just one. Oh, look at the body's not meant to bend that way, Glenn. No, nah, he's going to go eventually. <laughs> oh, he's on his face. Yeah, he can't come across the mouth and the nose there, Joe, and that's why let her stop that there. It's a good call. So 30 seconds, he can get another one. Get him in, get him in danger one more time. See if he can get the fall. Excellent job here by Anthony Burke, though, for the Indians. They needed a win, and they're going to get some bonus points. Oh, right We're going to bar it up. Bar. 
Barn hook again. Ooh, oh, big step. He's got to settle back in. Harner, man, he can, he's like Gumby down there. Yeah, nice job. Two back now. But Maybe Burke one more time. really looking hard for the fall. Not enough time. Ten seconds, ticking away. With that last. major decision, yeah. it's now 31-23 in favor of the home team. 120 pounds. We see Hauserman coming out. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you're going to see Hauserman go to... South has to set first. I'm not sure either of these guys are. It's not Hauserman. It's Ethan Mikado. No, that's not. It's Tommaso Mira for North. Andrew Lindros. Andrew Lindros. Any relation to Eric Lindros? I don't know. I'm going to say no. <laughs> Here's a here's a match with guys that aren't really regulars in the, either of these guys line either of these teams lineups, and now they're thrust into this huge rivalry match and see you know who's going to rise to the challenge. Yeah, in the spotlight now. Mira the aggressor so far. Lindros in on the shot, but it's half-hearted. Trying to use that length. Mira in on the counter, see if he's able to score from there. Use, you know, Rockmore's been real tough in that in that front headlock and switched off to a single leg and he runs him down. Yeah. So he's, he's stopping. He needs to keep going. Now he's giving Lindros back in. Lindros got that inside leg hook. Yeah, Lindros is long. Yeah. Different body types here. Ooh, he's going to try to slap that cradle on him. Nothing yet. He still, Mira still has two hands on that leg. He's trying to face him up. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Lindros can cover one more post. He's going to get it. Oh, he's got him in trouble now. There it is on the edge of the mat. Lindros strikes first. And Mira cannot let down here on the line. They're out. Man. Trick Lever letting them wrestle on the edge. I like it. Mirrors up to his feet. See him hand fighting clear. He can't run around. Nothing. Time There's ticking away. Hands. Locking hands. Ten seconds to go. He's got free move. He's got to stop it there. Doesn't. So two to one. Going into the second period. So good. Good action there, Joe. So, Glenn, I'm running through some scenarios in my head right now. If Rock South holds on to win this, they're down nine. Rock North is down nine going into Hauserman and Lucerne. And it's I think, not, I, I like, think you're going to see Hauserman on, on Waterman here. You're probably right. I'm, and then Lucerne to close it out against uh, Savardinov. Savardinov. So, you know, two really need, good and matches. They would, need, they would need nine points in those two matches just to tie it. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. A win by Rock North. Little pancake here coming up for Mira. Nope. He's going to stay on that front. Rock North arm. guys, like I was saying before, have been tough in that front headlock tonight. Yeah. Throw it by here, maybe. Yeah, the way he's circling, he's over. Oh, yeah. Attacks that near leg. Got to watch getting drug out of it a little bit. I'm sorry, Lindros struck out a little bit. Now he's on the reattack. Mira getting him a healthy dose of hips right now. Trying to counter this. So he goes back to that front head now. So like extended arm, maybe pound him a little bit, soften him up. I like that stalemate call. Yep. Oh, nice work by Mira there to get two. 
it's one of those situations where Lindros kind of stopped wrestling for a moment and yeah. Mira took advantage of it. And you can't do that. I mean, we, we've seen that. Ooh, oh, he's got a he's got cradle. Got locked up. He's got him stacked up. Uh, nope. He stepped in. He, now he stepped out. He reloaded. Yep. Oh, he's, good. Oh, he's got yeah. some back. He's holding two. See if reload it one more time. 26 got, seconds to go. He's got some time. You don't have to, there it is. Got him over again. Got to come out to that side more. Yeah, he's got to run his feet too. Yep. Now he's out of not in good position at all. Nonetheless, good job to work work two backs and send his lead to six two. Uh, you, Apologize for the time being out uh, on the on your broadcast there. Uh, we've got some staff on uh, the Council Rock South bench standing up. <laughs> Going to third period, 6-2 is the lead. We're on our feet to start. Mirror back in that front headlocker trying to stay in it. Great double leg takedown. Screws him in. Gets two. Makes it 8-2. He gets a turn here, Glenn. It's going to get interesting. Yeah, tight on that waist. Got a nice tight waist going. Now he's working that arm across the body. Lindros slowing it down a little bit here. He's looking for that cradle. Kenny got himself in trouble. See if they put him neutral. Yep, they're going to put him up. So, nice conversation there with wrestler and coach. And so, 8-3. Right back to beating on his head. A lot of reach, and Lindros should be looking to attack those legs. Now, great dialogue between coach and wrestler there. Coach Vakwa saying, "Patience, you're winning eight two. Namir is all juiced up right now. Eight three is the score. I'm sorry, with the escape, yes, eight three. My bad. However, you know, he does have to get busy if he's looking for that bonus, unless he's looking for something. You know, get that single leg and look for that cradle right away. Like he, he can, or, he can or get or it out of the front headlock like yeah. he got before. Yeah. He looks like he's a like, sprinter coming off uh, the box yeah, He's there. ready to go. He looks fresh, and Lindros does he's not. Right. He, Lindros is running. Yep. Just beating on his head. He's going to club in and club in some more. 40 seconds to go. He tries to beat the hands. Lindros does a good job keeping him at bay. But he's backing out. Yeah, I wonder how long. Oh, a good shot. Re oh, yeah. Him. That'll save him from stalling. Great sprawl there by Mira. Well, if you were going to tell me we were going to see Hauserman and Waterman tonight, whoo, I would have been here. Mike and I talked about it on the ride up. Not going to lie, in the the uh, the trek from Pottstown on the turnpike, we had a lot a lot of time to talk about potential matchups. Yeah, and it could very well be for the match. You know, Glenn, we carpooled out here to do our parking environment. <laughs> So four seconds left, so that's going to probably do it. And nice win there for Mira, eight to three. So brings them a little bit closer, 31 to 27. Four point lead for Sal, heading into maybe the biggest matchup of the year here that we've seen. And it brings everyone to their feet again. Just about everybody. No need for introductions, but we will anyway. We got Kyle Waterman from Council Rock South and Kyle Hauserman from Council Rock North. Some good old hand fighting going on out there, Joe. Hands to the face and everything. So these guys know each other really well. Yes, yes. Can't even tell you how many times they've wrestled. But I've seen, them, either. I've seen them wrestle at districts. I've seen them wrestle at leagues. We saw them in this very dual meet last year. Yeah, so... This is one of those ones that's going to be a one-point match. <clears throat> oh. 
Hauserman just a junior, but he's set to go to Penn. Ooh, great low single. Waterman down to the legs. A little bit of funk here. Both a little foot Kicking fight away. by Waterman. Yeah. Nice great foot hop. fight by Kyle Waterman. He's going to get some height now. He lost his shoe. Yep. Oh, I guess they stopped it because of the stalemate or because of the shoe off? Stalemate or? Waterman uh, is uh, a commitment. Uh, our sign still delivered going to Appalachian State. Wrestled for John Mark Bentley and the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Uh, Waterman's got to make sure he gets these laces tied right, too. Yeah, he better, that, he better, that, better that, tie them a little tighter and double knot them. That, that happens again. That dumb rule. Hausman coming off a win over recently at Powerade. So two very accomplished wrestlers on the mat. Not really sure where these guys will end up in the postseason, but it's great to get this match right here and a dual meet to start the new year. You know, often it's decided by that first takedown between these two. Obviously, Water, Waterman's put on some beef along with some strength. You know, Hausman giving up a couple pounds, but not enough to deter him in any way. There we have 0-0 zero, zero after one, and kind of what I expected here. This is going to be real tight. And the one zero zero, Waterman goes down. Hausman real tough on top. We'll see what if he's able to turn him. Remember last year we did this match. Hausman got on top and and cranked him, pinned him pretty quick. I don't yeah. anticipate that happening again, but you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah, that was a bit of a shocker last year in that duel. Hausman gets to get here. Swipes and Waterman gets the reversal. He's got a little bit of a navy there. See if he can use it to his advantage. And no, he works up. So two nothing. Strikes first. That's a big two there. Digging in boots. Hausman trying to work off a base here. Excuse me, Hausman trying to work off a base. Waterman getting heavy on top. Yep. Just crossed the midpoint of the match. Still 2 nothing here. 52 seconds to go in this second period. Nice Granby. Waterman follows. Nothing there. Hausman knows he needs to get a point back at least one here before the buzzer at the end of second. We try and get that tilt going. 20 seconds to go.
Another Grammy attempt only about by a, Hausman. Nothing there. Only about a four pound difference between these two. Well, good period for uh, yeah. Kyle Waterman. Or Waterman, sorry. Hausman goes down. He looked over. Coach Obaka said down. So Hausman's going to work. Have to work here and score. Both guys great from all positions too. I mean, these guys are tough to score on. Tough, you know, get anything going. Nice job again with uh, the boots by Waterman, breaking them down. Hausman's going to have to go now. Waterman's going to have to do something to try and turn him. He's not going to ride this, in this parallel ride forever. <laughs> 90 seconds to go. Now he slips a boot in to see if he starts getting to work in on top with that. But as it stands right now, a real parallel ride. We'll see if he's going to, you know, how long you're going to allow him here. Well, he's got that arm pinned up on the back now again still riding parallel but doing a good job controlling him he's got that leg up on there I don't know if that's nope nothing there but definitely some Minutes action ago. is needed here I mean I don't know if it's a stalemate or a stall call somewhere but Chris was going to let it ride out right now Another Granby attempt. Great job. Great blanket ride by Waterman. 39 seconds to go. So Hauserman needs to explode at the whistle. Or Castle Rock South is going to take this duel, snatch it right away from North yep. right here. Again, that's on top. Another caution. Trade cautions. 38 seconds to go here. Kyle Waterman still with the shooting up the lead and looking impressive in that. At that. Just can't get anything going on the top. Uh, Kyle's top game's too much. Oh, he's got uh, Waterman's top game. He's put him in danger. He's holding him there. 20 seconds to go. Some great stuff here. Waterman's hanging on tight. Eight seconds ticking away. Wow, big upset. Waterman Whoa, knows it looks at his bench and smiles. And there it is. This Rock South team just finds the magic to make it happen again. Again, just snatches away when it was North's year. Unreal, Glenn. Yeah, uh, I'm without just, words. I'm speechless. Unbelievable match. And again, just you know, two points scored. One, one reversal decides that one. Great match. Here we are. Outside we have, of a team point. We have Mohamed <laughs> Savradinov from Council Rock South and Luke Lucerne of Rock North. Somewhat anticlimactic though, but nonetheless, a decent matchup here with Lucerne and Savradinov. Savardinov really trying to come into his own here as a Council Rock South. Cern in on the off. single switch off to double leg. Savardinov countering. Cern's tough here though. He's got the two. A little warm the bus's champ from the Rock South faithful. 
Brad Silm Perry real quick to stand up and cut that off. So pretty much what we expected, you know, really came down to the last couple of matches here. And, boy, you couldn't ask for a better finish than Kyle Waterman and Kyle Hauserman wrestling for the match, potentially. Glenn, to, but, I mean, uh, while we break here, what kind of wrench does this throw in the seating? Oh, boy. Well, you know, for me, it's Quaker Town right now. As the one seed. No, I'm just saying they're the wrench. And, you know, where do you put them? You know, Counter Rock South has knocked off Springford, which, you know, some some feel, you know, is, you know, they're the best team. And uh, we haven't seen Owen Jay in Springford. So right now, you know. And we won't see that till after seeding. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know how you can sit in a, in a seating committee meeting, you know, for these duels and not and not count Quaker Town's, you know, huge victory over Council Rock South. So if you're thinking Council Rock South is the second best team or the first best, you know, first team, Quaker Town's got to be one or two. So um, that really changes the landscape. But now your four and five are going to be unbelievable teams. I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you who it's going to be. But, you know, it could be Council Rock North at this point. I, I really don't know. So, you know, remember, you have, you know, different coaches from different leagues, different areas. They really need to take a hard look at some of these, um, you know, dual meet matchups, if you will. And, and I think they do. You know, we talked to Coach Duraflo last night. And he, he gets it. You know, he's a guy that gets it. Um, I wish, you know, we had him actually in the meeting. Um, but certainly Tim Sizel will be there talking about the pack teams. Coach Sean Perry and Vivac will talking about these two teams. Uh, and Quaker Town, obviously. Um, so it's going it's to be a heck of a heck of a meeting. I can't wait to be in there. Escape the Rock final yeah. day. So it's coming quick, boys. Yeah, they're going to lock themselves in a room and fight yeah. it out. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be is you know usually we get that top four you know down pretty good. And this is going to be the first year I think where top four is going to be very difficult. To, to not only see, but just get the right right four in there. Great passing of the hands by Lucerne. Come up on that high single. And scores, runs his lead to 5 nothing. Oh, now he's looking, no, he doesn't have that bar. He's trying to dig it out. 44 seconds to go here in the match. 5 nothing lead for Luke Lucerne. You know, I, I'm almost to the point where, you know, on any given night, you know, what do they say on, on any given Sunday in, in football? But, you know, on any given night, it seems to me that the, this top four or five, even a group maybe of six um, teams can actually beat each other on any given night. So, like, thinking about it, like, has any of these teams been full strength when they've wrestled each other? You know, I mean, no. are, we looking at, are we looking at full strength? Like, No, uh, I mean, Cole Flanagan's out yep. over here. I mean, I think North is at full strength. Um you know, when Owen J beat Rock North, there was no Cern. And that was when early. Rock, when Rock North beat Owen J, there was no McCoy who had a pin, no Richie Nathan who wrestled in that match at heavyweight. Um, you know, last night, you know, we talked about just injuries. Owen J was in full strength last night wrestling uh, Boyertown. Uh, Springford Rock South. Um, Needles wasn't at 38 then. I don't think he wrestled that match. I mean, so, Quaker Town's the only team that really the, seemed exactly. to be full strength. Uh, and the Chamois loses to Springford in a nail biter without yeah. Zach Martin in the lineup. Yeah. yeah. Like, How does that look? Uh, you know, when 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 those guys are healthy, and, and from what we understand, Martin is back and will be in the lineup uh, this week. So it, you know, these that's another that's a whole other wrinkle in that argument as to who should be where. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, it's almost like just pick out of a hat. Throw the dart, throw some darts at the dartboard. Yeah. See what sticks. Yeah, like I said, that that you know that four or five matchup is going to be crazy on like, Friday. No night. one has left the building really, which is really cool. Watch this last match here, watching Luke Lucerne and Saverdinov wrestle. Yeah, I mean, but it's is, eerily quiet now. Yeah. Like you know that now it's now, now that it's locked. Yeah. Saverdinov gets one for stalling with a minute 16 left here in the period, and it's been all Lucerne. He's been pretty dominant. He's got that bar in out front. Let's see where he's going to try and turn him. Saverdinov doing a good job of pulling it out. And this is a very astute crowd on both sides when it comes to wrestling. And, you know, I, I don't think the Council Rock North fans are, are, like, you know, deflated in any way. I think they, they know that, 
you know, this, this match may occur again. It might be for the, the district dual championship, might be a semifinal, um, or it could be even in the wrestle box, yeah. uh, you know, for a chance to go to states or, um, you know, for that third, fourth spot. So, you know, everyone can walk out of here with their heads high. I mean, obviously, Council Rock South is going to walk out of here uh, feeling pretty good about themselves after that hard loss last night to Quake Town. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really just a, you know, a week away uh, for that seeding meeting. 7 nothing here. Not that it's going to affect the team score, but Saverdinov just not wrestling. Oh, just holding on on bottom there. Yeah, 13 seconds just going too to match. Much yeah. Great job trying to tilt him here at the end. And there you have it. The final score here at Rock South, 34-32. They're going to shake hands here. And, you know, again, these guys know each other so well. 34-29. Sorry, 34 to 29. my mistake. So we'll be back in a little bit with the rest of the match, but, you know, Glenn, let's just talk for a second. I mean, what did we just see here tonight? You, you think about, you know, I'll be honest, I, we, Mike and I talked on the way up, and, and and I talked all day with other people, and, you know, you, you know how it is. Like, you know, guys we know are asking what, how we think it's going to go, and, I, I you know, to be honest, I, I didn't expect this. I, I figure with no Flanagan, when we got here, saw no Flanagan, that we we were going to see Rock North finally get one over on these uh, on the, the Golden Hawks, and, you know, Coach Stone Perry finding a little magic with his team, maybe it was the robes, I don't know. Yeah, no, they did break out the uh, the robes tonight. You know, we didn't really make any predictions early. Um, I, I all, I'm all, glad I didn't. Yeah, I mean, all along, I, I felt North was the better team at the beginning of the year. But, you know, Council Rock South, you know, they have some magic. I mean, they are so experienced at these type of matches. Um, and there is your uh, wrestler of the match, Kyle yeah. Waterman. Give him a thumbs up. Uh, you know, no, no questions asked right there. Taking out the number one ranked wrestler at 126 pounds, uh, or no, at 120 pounds, in, in Kyle Hauserman. So yeah, I mean, this is going to be a rivalry that never goes away, and um, it only makes it better. Yeah, it just it makes things better. It makes things better for Southeast Region and District One. So I guess we're going to sign off, and you know, we're going to have to uh, interview some some characters tonight here from from maybe both sides. I don't know if we can do that we haven't done that in a while but um, we might have to do that tonight and but certainly Kyle Warneman is our ASICS and Schuylkill Valley Sports wrestler of the match with his big win tonight so uh, take care everyone we'll see you next time 34 Golden Hawks 29 Indians and it was a doozy <laughs>